Hi everyone, I'm Gunnar Grosch and welcome home to my kitchen. I just got back home this morning from Milan where I attended the serverless days. Um, I also had a privilege of talking there on chaos engineering, especially for serverless. One of the feedbacks I got from attendees was that they wanted to see more of the actual demo. Um, and I thought when I got back home that perhaps I should put together a video showing the demo a bit more detailed this time. So I went out, bought a microphone, installed OBS and now I guess we're ready to go. So bear with me if we have some issues. This is the first time I'm trying this out. So this is the serverless chaos demo app that I used at the conference. Uh, it's a simple serverless application that's running on AWS. Uh, it has an S3 bucket with static content. Uh, it has an Amazon API gateway and which then can invoke two different Lambda functions. One that's called normal function and one that is called latency function. Behind the Lambda functions, we find an Amazon DynamoDB table containing references to objects stored in the S3 bucket. So when an object is needed, uh, an API call is made, which invokes the Lambda function, which gets data from the DynamoDB table, and then uh, the client is able to get the data or the item from the S3 bucket. So pretty straightforward application. Um, it's quite simple. This is what it looks like in the browser. So it's a web-based app um, and the application just contains two rows of images. And the first three are the normal items. They are fetched using the normal function. And the bottom three are the latency items. Those are fetched using the latency function. So quite simple application, but it's useful in this case because we're able to then see what happens uh, with the normal items and with the latency items. So latency injection is what the demo is all about. Uh, and latency in this case is added to the function. So the Lambda function, the one that is called latency function, of course, is the one that will be adding latency to. And by doing so, we're able to simulate cold starts. Uh, we're able to simulate cloud provider issues. So if AWS has an issue which will cause latency, we're able to simulate those now to see how our application behaves. We're also, of course, able to simulate runtime or code issues. That is, if there are issues in the code that for some reason creates latency, we can once again simulate that behavior and see what happens to our application and how are the users affected by this behavior. Uh, we can also test integration issues. So if a Lambda function, like in this case, calls the DynamoDB table to fetch data, if we had latency in DynamoDB, what happens to the function, what happens to uh, the API gateway and what happens to the client. So we're able to see what happens throughout the chain in the architecture. But one important thing is timeouts. So by adding latency, we're able to fine tune our timeouts, make sure that the functions have correct timeout values. And this is something that uh, serverless hero Yang Kui wrote about in 2017. He wrote an article on Hacker Noon called Applying Principles of Chaos Engineering to AWS Lambda with Latency Injection. And in there he went into nice detail on how you can use latency injection in AWS Lambda and to then fine tune your functions so that they have proper timeout values. Besides just writing about it, he also created some sample code, uh, which he published on GitHub. Um, and he's also done several talks on the subject as well. AWS evangelist Adrian Hornsby created an article 
uh, that's called injecting chaos to AWS Lambda functions using Lambda layers. Uh, when Lambda layers was released by AWS, uh, it meant that we're able to create specific layers with functionality that can be shared through different functions. And in this case, uh, we can then create a layer containing the chaos injection, uh, which we can then share between different functions. So Adrian wrote about it and he also created the sample code that you can use to then deploy your own Lambda layers with this functionality. So latency injection is the chaos experiment we're going to do. What if my functions take x milliseconds extra for each invocation? What if timeouts occur? The hypothesis here is that the application can handle that latency is injected on a functional level. So let's do this. So let's start by looking at the code. This is the code for the normal function. Uh, it's quite straightforward. It's Python code that just based on a random number fetches an item from the DynamoDB table and then creates a response which is returned. The latency item on the, other, on the other hand, it has the chaos layer imported. So we're importing the layer that Adrian Hornsby created to be able to use that in our function. Then we're defining delay and we're adding that into our function. So every time this function on this code is invoked, it's going to use the functionality within the Lambda layer and to check if a delay should be added and what that delay then is. All of this is configured using parameters which are stored in parameter store. So we can just jump over there and look at that. Uh, we have a parameter called chaos lambda config which then has two as uh, separate settings. One is the delay. Uh, in this case, it's 500 milliseconds. And the other one is if the functionality is enabled or not. This one is set to false at the moment, which means that when the function is invoked, it doesn't add any latency. Looking at the Lambda layer, that's pretty easy. This has been imported and created into Lambda. So we have our Lambda layer ready to be able to use it. And within the functions, we have two different functions. And the one that's interesting is the one that's called get latency. Uh, what we've done there is to just link it to the uh, chaos injection layer so that it's added to the function. And by doing that, we're able to use the functionality within that layer. Okay, so let's try it out. And I think the easiest way to do that is by just calling the APIs. Uh, I'm going to use Postman for that. Postman is a simple UI to be able to call uh, APIs and see what happens with them. Uh, in this case, we have the normal function first. So we're calling that URL and by doing so, we're getting a response from the function which has fetched data from the DynamoDB table. In this case, a URL um, with a link to a JPEG, JPEG image. Um, every time we invoke it, we get a response and it's about 150 to 200 milliseconds response time every time. Uh, switching over, over to the latency one, uh, since we don't have the, the latency functionality enabled right now, we should get similar responses from here. So we can see that we're getting items and the latency is, or the, the entire response time is below 200 milliseconds. So that works just fine. Okay. Uh, let's switch over to the application. So this is what it actually looks like. And there are, as you can see, six images, which are called every fifth second to be replaced. Uh, so for every image, 
it invokes the lambda function on the top row, the normal function, on the bottom row, the latency function. And right now it seems to work as intended. So then time to inject some chaos into this. And we'll do that by using the AWS CLI. And the CLI, um, by doing so, we're able to simply turn this on and turn it off again uh, without using the, the console UI. So it makes it a bit quicker. Um, so we can simply just put a parameter into um, parameter store. In this case, just change the value from false to true, which means that as soon as this has been put into parameter store, we should get a delay of 500 milliseconds for each invocation of the latency function. There we go. Uh, we can switch to Postman first and try it out there. And now we sh should get a response that's about 700 milliseconds. So that seems to be right. It's added 500 milliseconds to each request. Yes. So switching over to the application, uh, it should still work. And it does, it just takes a bit longer to get the latency items. So it's a bit slower. Cool. So we've just performed our first chaos experiment, uh, which is to add latency to the application and we're adding 500 milliseconds. So then let's try to increase that. Let's move up to, let's say 2000 milliseconds, two seconds. There we go. We can try it in Postman. Yes, about 2200, so that's correct. And looking at the app, the normal items load as intended, the latency items are getting really slow. So it doesn't really seem to work as intended anymore since the items are loading so slow. Um, but we're still getting responses. So that means that we are within the timeout value. So let's try to increase it above that then. I know that the timeout value is three seconds. So let's put this to 3100. So that means that every invocation now should be a timeout. We can try that in Postman. There we go. Uh, instead of a 200 response, we're now getting a 502. Um, the time is above 3000 and we're getting an internal server error. So we're not getting the response anymore because the function times out. Uh, that would also mean that the functionality on the application isn't really there anymore. The bottom three items aren't being replaced. They look the same every time because the function doesn't respond with a new URL to a new image to load. Okay, it also means that we don't have any graceful degradation in this service because if we have built a UI that could handle errors in this way, perhaps the images shouldn't show anymore. So this is something to think about. How do you handle errors when they occur? So then we have performed the experiment. We've seen that it has created an error in our application. So let's then use the stop button. We change it from is enabled true to is enabled false. And as soon as we do that, the application seems to be running again. So now it's changing the, the images as soon as possible again. So now there's no delay or latency in the application. That's good. Okay. So we had a hypothesis that said that the application could handle these types of uh, problems with latency. Um, it seemed that when we got over a certain amount of latency, it couldn't really handle it. 
um, it started to, to load really slow, of course, um, but when we reached the timeout, the application or that part of the application just hang. So um, that is a, a successful chaos experiment. Um, whatever the outcome is, I would say that this is uh, a success because now we find things that we're able to work on to improve the application to make it more resilient. And that is the actual goal of, of doing these types of experiments here. So, if you want to know more about chaos engineering in general and chaos engineering for a serverless, make sure to follow Serverless Chaos on Twitter. Uh, serverless Chaos is a Twitter bot that retweets things about chaos engineering. Um, you can also look at the slides from my session on serverless days. Um, the link is posted. Um, I have also added the links to Young Kui's latency injection demo and Adrian Hornsby latency injection layer for you to look at. So, now we are done with the demo part. Uh, I hope it was good, more information to learn more about how to perform chaos in, in serverless. Um, and one last thing. At Serverless Days, I totally forgot to hand out stickers. So if you want to get some Serverless Chaos stickers or Chaos Engineering stickers, make sure to uh, post a reply on the tweet where this uh, video is posted. And the first five who post a reply will get some stickers in the mail. Okay, so thank you very much. I'm Gunnar Grosch and uh, thanks for watching the video. Bye bye.